Well, hey, Vision. Hey, hey, does that make you want to go out and like dunk on somebody? <laughs> go out there to like tackle somebody or for those just nailed on the ground, like go out there and just make a layup real strong. <laughs> okay, I like winning. Does anybody know that about me? I, I, I like winning. Okay, let me learn about you. Anybody out here like to be on winning teams? Who likes to be on winning teams? Okay, does anybody like to be on losing teams? I see a couple hands smacking, okay. All right, let's talk about winning for a minute. Talk about winning because winning to me, and I'm not talking about when you're playing cards like with your eight-year-old you know, nephew. Okay, it's okay to lose some of those. That's okay. Now, when there's something on the line, I mean, when you're playing for real, when it's like Tar Heels and Duke, you, know, you want to win. When it's, you know, you're, you're playing ball or you're you know, playing you know, some type of game or you're honestly trying to accomplish something as a team or at work, you want to win. I like being on winning teams. So as I think back uh, over my years, uh, got a couple pictures for you. First of all, back in 89, now I know some of you, the students are like, 89? Didn't even have basketball back then? <laughs> yeah, okay. Back in 89, I grew up in Detroit, and uh, it was my junior in high school, so I loved it, man. The Pistons, they went, they won the first championship, and me and my buddies would like sit there watching it. Get this, teenager, okay? We would snap, and we would chat, but we didn't have Snapchat, okay? <laughs> so it's like the original way to communicate back in the olden days, Okay. So we had the Pistons. Then fast forward a little bit, 2013, my boys, the Wolverines, and this is my, my Wolverine jersey, but Michigan Wolverines basketball, that's like that is closest to my heart. So back in the spring of 2013, me and a couple of buddies, we realized that the Final Four was coming to Atlanta. So I sat down one day for lunch with Meg and had a very important conversation. I said, Meg, <laughs> this is on my bucket list. I don't know who's going, because at that point, you, know, you don't know who's going. It's like a month before the tournament. I said, this is going to take a little bit of money, but if I could do this, and she's like, of course, you can spend how many hundreds of dollars? And, and me and two friends bought tickets and went to the Final Four in Atlanta. And amazingly, Michigan like won their way through the tournament, and I got to see them in person all the way to the championship game. It was, it was so fun. Now, you fl flash back the other direction to when I was a kid, and okay, you got me when I was a soccer. Now, give me the little, aww. Man, you guys are much nicer than the first crowd. <laughs> it took second time. So you got a little kid playing soccer, and then you fast forward up to, to playing basketball. And uh, man, I, a little rat tail going on there. I thought I was cool, man, I was something. But I like to win, and even at age 45, like some of these students know, when you go to camp or you're on the court with me, like I'm, I'm, I still bring it, okay? I like to win. Now, here at Vision, we want to win. We're, we're not in this thing to lose or to be mediocre. We're in it to win. And, and even as I look out and see someone wearing Ohio State gear today, I still can focus and preach passionately. But, and in fact, we'll be posting a picture uh, later this week of me and Scott in the lobby saying, hey, l real love happens at Vision Church, even between Wolverine and Buckeye fans, okay? Because here we win and we focus on the real prize. And the real prize is going to last for eternity. The real prize impacts people in their lives today. So if you got your takeaway card or your... Uh, your Bible app, pull it out, because there is a problem. And throughout the series, each week we're dealing with a different problem that we believe God fixes with what we call a life app or a virtue. So the problem we're going to deal with today is that God has a mission to accomplish, a very important, a vital mission to accomplish, and he's not going to do it through selfish or prideful people. Okay, that, that's a problem because it's a big mission, and I want to see it accomplished but really the problem is, is that we are naturally selfish and prideful people. And Jesus said, I'm not going to carry out my mission through somebody who's selfish, through somebody who is full of pride. So let's think about the fact that there is an app that will help. There's an app that is going to work on this, and it's called service. It's called serving. Now this, this concept of serving, if you've got anybody in your home or have ever had anybody in your home under the age of 18, raise your hand. You've got teenager, elementary, preschooler. Okay, so would we agree that in these people, we want to shape in them godliness, we want to shape in them unselfishness, we want to break pride, that literally we want to shape people that are not filled with selfishness and pride. I know in, in my home we do. So if that is also a passion of yours, God gives us an antidote. The antidote is service. That's why we, we put this opportunity next Saturday for our students to go and serve because we want to break selfishness and break pride in teenagers. With our kids, they serve. With our adults, we serve. You take that as an antidote, it breaks it, and God says, yes, my mission can go forward. I will work through people that are not selfish and are not prideful. So that takes us to our bottom line. 
which is that God has designed you and God has designed me to live a life of servanthood and to be a vital part of the body of Christ. So break this down into two pieces. He says, yes, I want you to be a part of a body of Christ. And as I said in the first service to Facebook Live, I said, if you're watching it or if you're here today and vision isn't your home, then hey, wherever your church home is, serve there. Be a part of that body of Christ. If vision is your home, then be a part of this body and serve. But it's bigger than that. It's a lifestyle of servanthood. This bottom line is saying, at your church, serve, and in your life, be a servant. So let's talk about that today. We, we talk here at Vision, we're just going to call it simply Team Vision. We're getting this ball rolling today, this new branding is saying, Team Vision. You want to be a part of the, the team here? Come on in. It's wide open. For generations now, there's been Team Jesus. You're like, Matt, that sounds so goofy. Hey, I'm naming it after the leader. You call it goofy if you want, but Jesus is our leader. It's Team Jesus. So for generations, all the way back to whatever, Team Jerusalem, Team Israel, Team throughout the years, there's been Team Jesus, and they take that baton and they pass it on to where they say, okay, Julian Hill, in this generation, at Team Vision, you carry the baton of Team Jesus because there's another generation coming you got to pass it to and pass it to. So as we unpack that today, I want us to think about the core habits we have here at Vision. You walk past them in the lobby, and if you hadn't paid much attention to them, as you're leaving today on your left, four core habits. The second one is simple. It says save people, serve people. Save people, serve people. So repeat after me. Save people, save people. serve people. Serve people. Think about this. What, what if Craig was in, was in prison, wrongfully accused? He's in jail, wants to get out. Lorraine's like, somebody go get him. We send in a stealth team. We go in their SWAT way. We pull him out. We save him. We're, we're leaving, and someone next to him is like, Craig, take me, help me. And Craig's like, no, man, I got to go. I'm out of here. And we look at him and say, Craig, you are being saved. Would you be willing to also serve someone else and be a part of God's plan? We believe it here at Vision. So much so, we've only got four core habits, and it's number two, that saved people serve people. It's what we believe here. So this week, as I took some time to dig into this, and I said, God, how... How do you want me to teach about this? And it was actually fun. Monday night with my family, we sat down at dinner and I put out to them and said, how would you guys teach about serving at Vision this Sunday? And they tossed some ideas out. And in fact, uh, my daughter, Elena, who was here earlier, she said, on Monday night, she said, Daddy, you don't know what you're talking about yet this Sunday? I said, no. I said, I got a blank slate. This is how it goes every week. That I wait on God. He gives me the pieces. We put it together. So that night, as they tossed out some ideas and none of them really clicked, so next morning, I'm laying in bed, and God says, Matt, you're all about teamwork. You love teamwork. That's how you thrive. He said, teach on teamwork. So team vision that we unroll it today is different than some passages I've taught out before. I mean, the things on your takeaway card, there's, there's Acts chapter 6. Where in Acts chapter 6, the young church was growing, and you know, with growth and increased numbers, there were some challenges. In fact, there were widows who weren't getting fed, and people figured out, okay, how are we going to feed them and do that? And the leadership talks and they meet that need, and the church grows, I'm not teaching out of Acts 6 today. I've done that in the past. In 1 Corinthians 12, it talks about one body, many parts. I was talking with one of our elders this week about it because he, he had some serious heart issues two weeks ago. He said, Matt, I totally understand even more so now how all the parts of the body work together. I said, Keith, that's a great topic. I said, that's not where I'm going this week. One body, many parts. You could dig into it this week from your takeaway card. Where I'm going with this is that Jesus had this mission. He came to earth and he said, I'm, I'm going to do all these different things in 33 years, but there's one mission in particular I have to carry out and I'm going to leave and entrust it to people. And you say, well, that's, that's kind of interesting. No, it's more than interesting because back then, Jesus looked at somebody that passed on a baton to, to somebody that got it to Mitch Lewis, that got it to Aaron, that got it to Emery because they took Jesus' mission and passed it down so we would get it. So there's other people in the next generations relying on us. So you got to listen today so you get this thing. Because Jesus, early in his ministry, he's teaching his disciples. He actually had just picked, as we pick up today in Matthew 5, he had just picked his closest 12 and said, these are going to be my, kind of my core team. And then the next day he goes out to teach. And it's really interesting because it says he goes out to teach on a mountainside. So that means there were people coming up to him not just like 50 or even 100. There were so many that he had to go and elevate himself so he could speak out to them. 
So you picture this. It's almost like Jesus going out to Crowder's Mountain, getting on the side of it and looking down at hundreds, maybe a thousand people that are saying, I'm, I'm hearing something from this guy, Jesus, that's different. This mission he's talking about that I, I want to I wanna listen. I'm not sure yet if I'm in on that, but I want to I wanna listen to it. And we pick up in Matthew 5, Jesus on a mountainside is talking. So let's, let's take a look at this. And as I unpack this first part, it might be a little confusing, so just, just work with me on it, and then I'll, uh, I'll tell you what it means. It says, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside, and he sat down. His disciples, now this is, they're calling the whole group disciples, not just the 12, but basically people coming to him to listen. Now, his disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He said, blessed are those who mourn, for they'll be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they'll inherit the earth. And I think like you, they're sitting there saying, okay, Jesus, this is either strange, or I'm not really liking the sound of meek, but I'm going I'm to listen. And you guys listen too on this. It says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they'll be filled. Blessed are the merciful, but they'll be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they'll see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they'll be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. And I think they kind of kind of move back on that one, like he's saying, okay, persecuted, insulted. Okay, I'm going to listen, but this is really, this is almost concerning me some now. He says, uh, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and they persecute you and they falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Instead, he says, rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now, if you're listening to this saying, okay, Matt, that's, that's strange. I don't clearly understand that, or it, it's, it's not really appealing. Let me unpack this. Because in the next section, Jesus is going to talk about what it takes to carry out the mission. In this section, what he's doing is he's saying, okay, the, here are the kind of people I'm looking for. Here are the people that I want to carry out my mission. And I'm so glad he didn't say, okay, in this crowd, the, uh, the, the 10% most educated people move to this side, and I'm going to keep those. Or you look at the crowd and say, okay, the, uh, line yourself up by salary and the top 10%, I'm taking those. Um, then I'm going to line you up by how good you look. And the ones that don't really look so good, let's move them out. So let's keep the handsome and beautiful, the rich and the educated. Okay, that's what I'm looking for on this team. That's who's going to carry out my mission. Jesus doesn't see any of that. Jesus says, let's talk for a minute about your heart. Let's talk for a minute about what's inside of you. He says, if you are poor in spirit, which, which basically means you're humble, he says, if you're humble, okay, you, you're going to make this cut. He says, if, if you're a peacemaker, rather than the person that's just always getting into fights and being the, the brash one, if you're a peacemaker, okay, you're, you're the kind I'm looking for. He says, blessed are those who mourn, and they're like, okay, that's not me. I don't want to cry all the time. I don't want to do that. He says, no, no, actually, this type of mourning is that when you think about your sin it breaks your heart. That it literally, it, it moves you. Say, God, I am mourning because of my sin. Will you take this away from me? Will you help me with this? He said, if you're the kind of person that either doesn't think about your sin at all, or when you think about it, you're like, ah, it doesn't really matter. It's not that important. He said, I really don't need a teammate like that. He said, I need a teammate that thinks about sin and it hurts their heart. He says, I want somebody meek. And the guys in here are like, hey, I'm, I'm not meek. I'm not letting anybody make me weak. And, and tender, no, meekness, meekness is a horse that's under the control of a rider. A horse that has power and passion and energy, and it's all put under the control of another. Jesus says, will you be under my control? And your power will fall into my mission. So Jesus lays this all out, and he summarizes it basically saying, if you have a heart like that, then why don't you stay around and let's talk about the mission? And I imagine what happened at that point is some people were like, uh, I, got, I got to go and I got some things to do and this isn't exactly for me, not what I really expected. And I wonder if the crowd's kind of thin some. I just wonder. To where Jesus, and Jesus was not intimidated by that. I don't even think Jesus was disappointed or surprised by that. Because he said, you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be insulted. He laid it all out. He said, this is where I'm going. If you want to go there with me, stay. And the crowd that stayed, he said, okay, now let me talk about how you're going to carry this out. Let's take a look. He says, you are the salt of the earth. 
But if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. And make sure you understand this. This is not after like months of training camp where you said, okay, I've trained you guys and I see, man, your light and I've get you ready to be salt. This is him seeing a vision in you to be salt and to be light. I'll unpack that here in a minute. He said, you're the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. And I'll get to verse 16 in a minute. So what he's saying is he's looking at you and he's saying, if you walk with me, I believe you'll be salt. I believe you've got it in you to be the light of the world so that someday, way down the line, this light will keep shining into darkness. You maybe don't have what you need right now. And in fact, honestly, when we come to him with our open hands, we don't have what we need. But he says, if you have the heart I just described and you have the desire, then you have it in you to be salt and you have it in you to be light. And if that excites you, Jesus says, they said, let's change the world. And in verse 16, look at this. He says, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. He's saying, you're not, you're not doing this to get a lot of power, to make a lot of money, to get a lot of prestige. That's not the end game. The end game is that your light would shine and your salt would affect so that people would look and see God. Now thinking about salt here. Okay, does anybody like salt on their food? Does anybody like microwave popcorn with a lot of butter and a lot of salt on it? I, I do like that. I do like that. Cause you know, you sit down with some popcorn and there's like not any salt on it. Like this is not good. You throw that stuff out. You sit down with your steak. You want seasonings on it. You want to taste that. If you take a piece of steak, a piece of meat, and put just a couple pieces of salt on there, you, you don't taste that. It doesn't have effect. So you as salt, God wants you to get into the world and have effect. So that people that work with you would say, man, there's, there's something different about Patrick. You'd say, yes, I'm, I'm salt. They'd say, man, there's, there's something different about Matthew. They'd say, man, there's, there's light in him that shines in darkness. You think about when you go to Lowe's, there's a whole lighting section over there. If you take a flashlight and turn it on right there, it really has no effect, right? It's so bright. But if you go into a dark room or literally a dark world, or you go into a world shattered by murdering at school and you turn light on, people say, oh, there's something different there. Jesus says, exactly. I want you to have effect as salt and effect as light so that you don't fret when the world gets darker. You say that I'm just going to work harder to shine. I'm going to work to be salt that makes a difference. And Jesus says, that's my mission. That's what I want you to do. Maybe somebody says, uh, hey, why, why shine my light? Why, why be salt? Is it going to really make a difference? And I think about you know, the lady who stood up with me here before, Kirsten. In Kirsten and Matthew's world, it makes all the difference that somebody from here shine the light into their world so that now they shine the light into their kids' world and that they are now salt and they go out and have effect so that in our church, we see people saved. Literally, their eternities changed. We see marriages that change and relationships that are healed. We see people in despair and in hopelessness say, oh, there's something here that's different. We say, let's show, let's show you that light and that salt and that is the effect that Christ will have on them. So it is totally worth what we're trying to accomplish here at Team Vision for you to be salt and you to be light. So I ask the question then is how does God want your light to shine? So here's how we're going to pack it. Two pieces of this. The first thing is in your whole life. Okay, so say whole life. Whole life. Whole life. Whole life. Okay, this is important because you got to get it that this is not just when you're on the property of Vision Church. That's a part of your life, but your whole life, God says, I want you to be a servant with your life. Paul wrote about this in Philippians 2 and described our leader Jesus and how he wants his pattern to come out in our life in terms of servanthood. Look at this in Philippians 2. It says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Looking, not looking to your own interests, but instead looking to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. And then Paul, he unpacks what that mindset looks like. He's saying, look, guys, you're, you're on team vision. 
you're on team Jesus. If you call yourself a follower of Christ, you're on this team and our leader said, not this leader, our leader Jesus says, be humble, be a servant, literally lower yourself and life and society says, no, 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 you're supposed to raise yourself. Jesus says, that's, that's not my mission. Jesus says, have this type of mission and then Paul fleshes it out and said that Jesus by doing this won the ultimate prize. Remember back in Matthew 5, Jesus said, there's reward in this. There is reward, certainly for the people you're serving in your life, but there's something in you that will wake it up, that will truly shine when you serve and you find your place in the body of Christ. So this is Team Jesus. Now, inside here at Vision, we're a part of this body of Christ that has been going on for almost 2,000 years. So the second way you serve is at Vision. All right, so say at Vision. Okay, if this is your church home, then you say, okay, I want to be a part of Team Vision. And again, if this isn't your church home, you find your church home. You serve there. But if you call Vision your home, I say you have a chance to be some type of light that shines at our church. And with this Team Vision, I want to kind of unpack what it really looks like to serve here at Vision. If you say, okay, I, I might like to try, but oh man, if I, if I even sign up on this orange card, am I in for like five years? I'm like, I, I can't get out of this thing? No, no, no. We do what we call test drives. So today you'll have a chance to sign up for a test drive so that what it could look like is maybe on your Sunday, you say, okay, I'd, I'd like to try the parking lot or I'd like to try serving with the kids or I'd like to try the tech team or what your Sundays would look like is you come on in here maybe a little bit earlier, 30 minutes, 45 minutes earlier. You meet with your team. You, have, you round up in what we call a VIP meeting where you pray together and get the information and you cast a vision. If you're staying longer, honestly, we even feed you. We got our oasis in the back with some snacks. We take care of you. You build relationships on that team. You care for each other. Like this week, one of our team members, they had a parent that died and that small group is rallying around them saying, what can we do to help? How can we do this? How can we help you? How can we serve? How can we minister? That doesn't happen unless that person is on a team serving. You say, okay, it takes, it takes a little bit more time. It takes a little bit of commitment because your team leader is going to contact you and say, hey, you're serving once a month. You're serving twice a month. I'll see some people, they serve every week. They come to one service and worship. They go to another service and serve. That's just what they do. That's how their light shines. Maybe you serve during the week. You're on a clean team. You serve once a quarter. You're on the admin team. or You go off site and, and help us with our projects. I'm going to unpack this for you so you can see what it is like to serve at Vision. So pull out your orange card. Even if you already serve here, pull it out and look at this with us. So as I ask you to fill it out today, that everybody, even the current volunteers, they pull it out. And you say, okay, I serve here, and that may even inspire somebody else to pick it up and serve. So let's, let's look at this. Let's kind of unpack this. Because Team Vision is so, oh my goodness, you're going to see in a little bit. We pull up some volunteers. It is such a wide variety of talent and passions. With, with kids, we got on that side of hallway preschool, and this side of hallway elementary, we don't have child care here. We, we don't do child care. We do ministry where these team members go in and sing and lead small groups and invest in these kids. So you see with our preschool, we'd love if you got some musical talent to get involved with worship or as a storyteller. Maybe in our, our elementary, same thing. Get on that stage and teach. Get on that stage and sing. Do movements. Guys, okay, I'm, I'm letting you know a little secret here. We're unveiling something new today. It's called the Blue Crew. The Blue Crew is our rebranding of anybody who sings or does any type of movements in Viz Kids and this Blue Crew, led by Kayla, led by this team of leaders that love kids. They're going back there and taking music and movement to a new level so that kids love coming to church. In fact, if you have any type of musical talent, John Evans, this is your time. Man, sign up, John, wherever John's at. Get him signed up. If you've got some musical talent, if you can sing or you got energy, you want to try it, you mark it on here, or even for this one, you stop by the Connection Center because today we're having auditions. Auditions for the Blue Crew, 4 o'clock are kids, 5 o'clock are adults, and I would love teenagers to get in on this and say, we're going to go back there and invest in kids. You say, I'd like to try the Blue Crew. Let me, just, let me go to it and, and kind of learn about it. You try the Blue Crew, and you get there and you love on these kids. Now, continue in our elementary. Hey, we need people in our tech team. We need people in that Viz Kids lobby that have energy to greet and to love on them. And trust me, this isn't typing in on a computer. This is, man, I'm so glad you brought your parents to church today. And you give them a high five. And those kids love coming to church. 
We would love to have you on a team doing that. In our Ignite student ministry, we need somebody to coordinate the food. We need somebody on our tech team. We'd love your help in any of those areas. We do background checks for anybody that works with kids 18 and under. We take great care of those kids and students. Our host teams, the heartbeat of our church, that when you come on this property, you got parking lot team, ushers, greeters, first time, connection center, all of these teams of volunteers that say, I want to greet people and love them and make them feel welcome here at Vision Church. If you want to try that, you sign up, you take a test drive. If it's not the right spot, you back up, you try somewhere else. Continue in our adult production team. If you sing, we could use you up here. If you got technology, we could train you on running the camera for Facebook Live, running the computer during the service. We would love your help in those areas. Various stuff during the week, our clean team comes out. Strictly volunteers to help clean our church. If you'd like to do that once a quarter, once every other month, check them in there. Someone will, will contact you. Our finance counting team, leading a small group for adults. Our maintenance team. See, I could, I could help come in once a quarter, help fix stuff around here, help build stuff. I'd like to do that. Our local outreach, in, in addition to our normal outreaches, we got our moving team. I'm telling you, men and teenage boys, we need you. Put on here that you'll help, and maybe once a quarter, you help us move somebody. And then our meals ministry, and this is not the meals ministry, in case you guys know the meals family. This is the meals ministry. That when people have a death in the family, or a baby, or a hospitalization, this team jumps into action and brings food to their home. And if you sign up to do it, maybe once every other month, you help with that. So anywhere on here, you mark it up, you put your name, your phone, your email, and on your way out, you drop it in the buckets at the doors. And like I said, even if you already serve here, fill it out. Tell us where you're serving, so maybe that might encourage somebody else who's apprehensive next to you to fill it out, and you turn that in before you go. Now, I want you to meet some of our team, because the lights that we have that shine here at Vision Church are so different and are so talented and so passionate, and the one who really kind of steers that ship is our volunteer coordinator. So if you guys would, welcome Wendy McCather. I'm here on stage. Yes. Wendy is loved here at our church, and I know you've seen some of these shirts floating around already today, but we're unveiling our new Team Vision look. So, Wendy, why don't you kind of tell them what you do, and then you just kind of bring out some of your team. Okay. Like Matt said, I am the volunteer coordinator here, so I help you get plugged in to figure out where you want to shine your light. Uh, we have many different areas that you can do that, behind the scene, up front, um, and we work with you wherever you're comfortable. But we do have several that I wanted to bring up this morning that help with that every Sunday. So when I call your name, just come on up front, line across here, we're gonna give you a t-shirt. Go ahead and put it on. Mm -hmm. Wear that t-shirt proudly. Um, we're gonna start with our host team with uh, Demi Wiggins. Today. I'm sorry. Today. Today. Yes. I'm sorry. You go, Mom. I said, where's she at? There she is. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Right. Uh, preschool, we got Bert Pocock. Good night. Sorry. Um, our elementary, we've got Brandon Samons, and our student ministry, Amanda Tracy. Thank you, Brandon. Brandon. I saw him earlier. Love you, Amanda. Thank you. With our clean team, we've got Michael Walker, and finance and accounting, Carrie Seary. Um, with our tech team, the folks that are hard at work in the back in the dark, we've got Jennifer Wood. <laughs> with the band, we've got uh, Tony Lanuto and our vocalist. One of our vocalists is Cassandra Farmer. Um, our um, adult small group, we've got Julie Hill. <laughs> Mills Ministry, Nevin uh, Kiefer, the Mills Ministry. <laughs> our care team, Lorraine Wachowski. <laughs> Outreach, Tamara Phillips. Lorraine. 
And last but not least, we got our maintenance team, Scott Wood. So as you can see, we have many areas that you can um, shine your light. Like I said, it can be up front or behind the scenes. Every ministry is important. That's what makes vision what we, I mean, they help what we do. We couldn't do it without our volunteers. So let's go ahead and give a big round of applause for all of these folks. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you guys. We love you. And uh, Wendy, why don't you step out here again? Because as they turn in orange cards today, they're going to route to Wendy. And we're going to get someone in touch with you quick so you can take a test drive. A safe test drive, right? Safe test drive, yes. Yes. So, yep. uh, indeed, what Wendy does here to oversee our volunteers and help you along that pipeline is huge. So, why don't you guys, again, thank Wendy and Catherine for what she does here. Yes. And a cool thing is with those shirts, if you currently serve at Vision, your team leader or ministry leader will be getting you yours sometime in the next two weeks. So, you'll get yours. If you're standing there saying, man, I'd love to serve, it's easy. Now, before I tell you more about that, I want to give you something. Starting from that side of the room, we got buckets with glow sticks. Now, in the first service, some people started cracking them. Don't, don't crack that glow stick. <laughs> Hang on to that glow stick. Now, you got that orange card. Think about this orange card. I got a couple challenges for you. And as you know, in this series, I've been having a challenge for you the last couple of weeks. So first of all, who, who has been hugging people on Mondays? Okay, has anybody been doing that? Hugging people on Mondays? Okay, two weeks ago, I talked about kindness. And with kindness, I said, sometimes all it takes is a simple hug. So I challenge you to do is on Mondays in February, whoever lives in your home, you hug them. Especially if you got, you know, a kid or a teenager, and a teenager's like, don't hug me. Like, hey, Pastor Matt said I had to. We're hugging on Mondays. And then, hey, maybe take that in to work or take that to school. Whatever that looks like in your world, you figure out how to show kindness through hugging. Last week, we talked about love. Did anybody love anybody last week? Anybody do that? Okay, then I'm challenging you. Try it again this week. Go a little bit out of your comfort zone. Just love on somebody. It could be as simple as at the grocery store, asking the person truly how they're doing. Truly, get in someone's world in a way that you love them. So your challenge this week, thank you, guys. Your challenge this week is to figure out where you want to serve. That before you leave today, you would check something on there. You turn it in. And hey, if it's to be with the Blue Crew, man, you stop back by the Connection Center, and today we'll get you taking that next step to have some fun with the Blue Crew. It means that much to us to invest in these kids. So our bottom line again, that how God has designed each of us to live a life of servanthood, to do that in our life, and to be a vital part here at Vision, I want that to soak in, that this mission that Jesus started so many years ago, and he sent it to you, Tina. He sent it to you, Victoria. Ron, he passed this thing down to you. This mission, this baton now is in our hands as Team Vision for our light to shine. It's our chance to impact the world with his mission. So let our, truly, our good works point people to God. Point people to his love so they can see what we do and they can praise God in heaven. All right, let's pray together.